All right, guys, welcome back to episode 16 of Tank Chats. Uh, here you're looking at the light tank reconnaissance M41, otherwise known as the Walker okay. Bulldog. So with the U.S. Army looking to replace their aging light tanks from the Second World War, uh, to replace their M24 Chaffees, which we've done a video on, their stewards, things like that, that have already been sent out to other countries, development of this started from the actually started from the M24 Chaffee and developed when they created the uh, M24 E2 Super Chaffee. It was a prototype, but then they turned this into the prototype T41. So this uh, vehicle here was designated, when it was in a prototype phase, was designated as T41, which developed into the M41. Uh, first called the Little Bulldog, but rechristened as the Walker Bulldog, named after General Walker, who was killed in a Jeep accident during Korea. So these were produced from 1951 to 1954. There was supposedly a batch of these sent to Korea, but they did not make it in time for the fighting. Uh, the, specific, the specific example that we're looking at here today, I think is probably an M41 or an M41A3, the later variants of it, because it has the high velocity 76 millimeter M32A1. So with that, we're gonna cover more into the history. So. I told you guys when this vehicle was produced. So, the development of this vehicle started in, actually in 1950. There's a picture of Harry Truman actually inspecting a prototype of this vehicle. It developed from the T-37 and Super Chaffee variants, because uh, that's what it was intended to replace. So, this particular example, so it developed into the T-41, which became the prototype. They did not see service, they were produced from 1951 to 1954. They did not make it in time to see service in Korea except they were, they were supposedly a batch sent, but they got too late for combat action. Uh, during the late 1950s, early 1960s, up to the late 60s, it was actually adopted by the Bundeswehr. So the Bundeswehr was a German unit that used actually light tanks. So they adopted this, and there are actually a couple upgraded variants of this with a 90 millimeter gun, things like that. Um, so that's the history on that, and then during the Bay of Pigs invasion, these were actually out, outfitted to some of the... Um, so during the Bay of Pigs invasion, there was actually a platoon of these sent over uh, that was actually trained by the CIA. Ooh, you guys aren't supposed to know that. This, uh, so there was a group of Cubans that were actually trained by the CIA to use these vehicles. These were actually outfitted to the Cubans during the Bay of Pigs invasion. They performed well against uh, mm, uh, in their armored roles, but because they were used so much, they actually ended up running out of ammunition about after a day or two. Uh, they defeated the Cuban rebels had had. And later, and if you guys didn't know, in the 1960s, a little conflict called Vietnam. Uh, these were sent to the Arvin and used by the U.S. forces. So the Arvin actually ended up using them for, like, take them into Laos and Cambodia and use them like FOB defense. And they defeated some T-54s and some PT-76s and stuff like that. East defense. U.S. troops used them as like fire support vehicles and like uh, mobile artillery or like kind of like FOB defense. And they started phasing these out in the late 1960s because, at least in U.S. service, they were starting to be phased out in the 1960s because it was considered this vehicle was deemed too heavy for uh, air reconnaissance and like airdrops for uh, like airborne units because the light tank is supposed to do that. So that is what ended up developing into the Sheridan tank, the XM551 uh, Sheridan. There was actually a hole from an M41 Walker Bulldog used to produce a prototype that led to the XX, the XM551 Sheridan. It was basically the Sheridan turret on top of a, uh, top of a Bulldog chassis. So that's what happened there. There were numerous of these vehicles exported to foreign countries, and there's actually some countries that still use them today. These vehicles are still technically in service in some countries. There is like, uh, the Royal Thai Army still uses them. There's uh, Taiwan, um, Republic of China, things like that. There's a bunch of uh, operators still in use in this vehicle today, but these were highly exported and used by the Danish, Germans, uh, uh, Uruguay, Spanish, like everybody had Walker Bulldogs because it was such a nice tank. Um, at least in their in their eyes they were. American crews kind of suffered with them because uh, our taller stature, they didn't fit in the vehicle as well as some of the shorter people like the Vietnamese and things like that. But that is pretty much the history of this vehicle. With that, we're gonna hop right into the tour.
Alright, so hopping into the tour of this vehicle, you guys. So right away, you see the front slope right here. It was outfitted with about 25 millimeters of armor, so like half an inch of uh, just steel armor. You can see the welds and stuff here on the steel plate. Uh, you have your front uh, drive lights and your service drive and your marker lights. Some iron bolt lifting plugs here. Uh, tow pintle cables down here. Access to the power pack and transmission will be down here. Uh, bush guards for the service drive lights, blackout markers. You got your front fenders here. And actually on this fender over here, there's a spot for a Pioneer kit actually. So this would have like tools, shovels, rakes, picks, mm -hmm. axes, all things like that. And big thing right here you have the m32 a1 76 millimeter gun so it's a high velocity gun with the bore evacuator which would basically like put the fumes in here and basically allow it to ventilate and not like suffocate the crew uh, you got your front track links right here these are steel and rubberized tracks down here and you see the u.s star on the front this is also where your driver would sit. You can see his vision periscopes right here. And I believe this will be a mount for like front equipment, anything like that, um, like tie downs, things like that. And I think they would, some of these variants would actually have like an infrared spotting scope on it. But that covers pretty much the front of the vehicle. With that, we will hop up into the turret. All right, so hopping up onto the turret right here, you see the big obvious thing right here. This is a commander's hatch. This vehicle would have a crew of four. You would have your commander right here, your loader, and your gunner would be seated right here in front of him. And then the driver, which we showed you his driver hatch earlier, which uh, we showed you that earlier. Right here, we amount for a 50 caliber machine gun, as well as another mount for a machine gun right here, so they could have two machine guns if they wanted to. Most of the time, it would be one 50 cal on top. You can actually see the rest for the barrel back here. That's where the 50 cal barrel would rest. On the back right here, this is actually a ventilation for, for the crew be ventilation for the turret and your combo will be back here as well you got iron bolt lifting plugs on the back here for lifting and towing you have these handles to get up onto the turret or hang bags and stuff and equipment off of you have your commander's uh vision slits right here and right here this would be the gunner's periscope the gunner would be seated up here in front of the commander this is where he would look out of so this would be the gunner seat and right here is also another mount barrel rest for the 50 caliber barrel where I'm standing, this will be the loader's hatch. The loader would sit in here, and he has his direct vision periscope right here. So that pretty much covers most of the turret. Uh, on the side, you can also see that there are smoke detonators, smoke launchers. So if they need to cover their movements or do some recon covered by smoke, they can do that. And uh, up here on the front is where the turret, that's the front of the turret where they would sometimes actually have an infrared spotlight or a spotting scope on the front there. So that is pretty much the turret, you guys. With that, we will hop down and get into the side. So normally you guys don't see me behind the camera usually, but actually Mr. Jumanya, yeah, shout out to him, he's shining his flashlight. But you can see a little bit inside of the turret, this is where the gunner sight would be. I forgot to mention this is the turret. This is where the gunner sight would be. And then over here, it actually looks damaged, but this would be where the machine gun would be. It would be a... Uh, either an M1919A4 or an M72 machine gun in later models. So, just wanted to show you guys that too. I thought that was pretty neat. Okay, so uh, bonus footage here. We actually got access inside. Um, the escape hatch is actually open. So, underneath all these tanks, there's actually an escape hatch. You see Mr. Damani there. Hold, shout out to him for holding the flashlight. Uh, but I'm going to film the best I can for you guys. I'm literally laying underneath this tank right now. Oh, but you can see the turret basket. You can see, uh, shine the light up more. You can see the fire extinguisher back there right now. We're actually where the driver would sit. Uh, turn the, turn the flashlight around all the way around 360. That's why I said you need to come under here, <laughs> but right there is where the, yep, there you go. That's the driver's seat right there. And you can still see some of the, the white chrome paint. You can see the driver's slit right there. You see the chrome painting, the white liner is still painted on. Somebody unfortunately actually littered in here. Uh, shine it back around, by the way. So you can see all the crew positions. You can see into the turret. So right up there is the loader's hatch. Over there, I'm gonna try to film it. We have the commander's hatch. 
She seems rusty. She's old, but she might still work. You can see where her ride would sit. This is actually the uh, turret ring right here where the turret would turn on. You can see it attached right there. So bonus footage for you guys. This is actually really cool. Um, I really want to try and get in this thing, but it's kind of welded with a bar, so I can't really get in there. But uh, so you can even see the breach up there to the gun. Everything still in this tank. So it's pretty, pretty cool. So there you go, more view from the escape hatch. So this is actually the escape hatch right here. They're smart putting this bar here, otherwise I'd be inside this tank right now. <laughs> yeah, but you guys can see almost everything in there. That's insane. That's so cool. breach and everything that's insane all right guys thank you for tuning in this video all right so hopping into the side of the vehicle you guys as you can see the standard mpd mbt doctrine uh you had your drive sprocket actually in the back here and your front support wheel in the front that was kind of standard operating procedure with uh the uh the new ma uh, main battle tank line or light tank of the 50s and anything further on after that so you have your support wheels up here you have your torsion bar suspension system you can get a really good look at that torsion bar suspension system your road wheels track links you have the pioneer kit that i mentioned earlier on the side this would be for shovels picks rakes tools anything like that uh you have a stowage bustle stowage bin right here you would have access to that put anything equipment extra rounds anything you'd want in there uh she might open no she won't open uh on the side here also as well you have the exhaust this is where your exhaust would come out of we'll get more to that into the back but um and the big thing that we noticed is that you have the handles for grabbing on to get on top of the vehicle so handle on the side of the turret and you have your smoke dischargers right here so these would actually be smoke grenades for covering your movements and screening i did not mention earlier but this vehicle is actually produced by a cadillac so this uh this baby right here is a Cadillac. So she knows she's got some horsepower. We'll get to that in the back. But this was a Cadillac. Armor all around was 25 millimeters. Everything side, front, rear, everything 25 millimeters all around. So with that, pretty much covers the side, you guys. We'll get into the back. All right, so hopping into the back, uh, right here, you see the access to your engine deck. This is where the engine would be in here. Uh, this would be a 500 horsepower engine, Continental AOS. It would be a 500 horsepower engine that could power this baby up to 45 miles per hour. Take off no fun, no fun switch speed governor. Should probably get her up to 50. Because like I said, this was a reconnaissance tank, a light tank meant for reconnaissance and scouting. You have your exhaust right here, your rear marker lights, your reverse lights, all of their rear marker lights here. So you can see she's got a big exhaust on her. So she was, the first versions of these tanks were actually very fuel hungry, but they up, once they got the upgraded Continental engine and stuff like that, they were a little less fuel hungry and they had that more power to weight ratio and the higher speed. You have more iron bolt lifting plugs back here, big ones, because this was meant to be an airborne tank. You have your towing cables back here, your towing lugs, towing mount, and back here, this would access, uh, I think, actually the panels inside to get to the engine. You have more lights down there, back of your tracks. And right here is actually the rest of the barrel. This would be your travel lock for the 76 millimeter gun. So that's what this would be right here, is a travel lock for the 76 millimeter gun. Uh, right here you have another like you have another access to the engine and fuel reserves and like oil and all that stuff in here other than that there's not much else to say about the back you guys like i said engine deck pretty much everything is covered that will happen to close out this video you guys had to get a memo to come out and film this tank so um props to the props to the people uh here at Graf Deer that gave me uh permission to go and film out here so 
So thank you, Miss Given Ren. Shout out to you on my YouTube channel uh, for giving me permission to come out here and film this video. This also, fun fact about this tank, this is also my dad's favorite tank ever. So he and I both enjoy playing it and running around on maps and world of tanks. It's a very fun tank. Um, and I know he'll appreciate this video. So. Peace.